Hi everybody, it is Sunday evening again and it is uh, almost Christmas. Hope you guys are well. Tonight's topic is going to be about the love of many growing cold. Oh, yeah. So we see a lot of that going on in our culture, in our world. The love of many growing cold. Is everyone doing well? Are you guys worn out from the holidays? Are you running around just sick of the, the hustle and bustle? I mean, what is going on? Is there a lot of distraction going on? Are you worried about the cares of this life? Are you caught up and entangled with the cares of this world? Are you as they were in the days of Noah? They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and shopping and selling and buying and everything. And then suddenly the flood came. Is that where y'all are at? Do you see the signs of the times happening right now? Or are you over cared, over distracted by the cares of this life D does it matter to you Do is god showing you what's going on while the world is looking for christmas presents and looking at events and just running around and just going to parties and and going to light ceremonies and going to christmas ceremonies is anybody thinking about the signs of the times that we are living in so that we can warn people about what is coming in the, in the minutes, the days, the hours, the weeks ahead of us. Well, I can tell you by what the Bible says that the last days will be as in the days of Noah. Like I said, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and buying and selling and going on with life as usual and then suddenly the flood came and took them all away. It killed, it killed them. And Noah and his family, only eight people were saved out of the destruction and the annihilation of the earth. So today, my friends, we are going to talk about the love of many growing cold. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 12, that because of the increase of lawlessness, the greater the love of many will grow cold. What does that mean? What does that look like in our world today? Listen, we see all kinds of stuff going on in the news. Every time you turn on the news, there is stuff about family members killing somebody else in their family, children killing their parents, parents killing their children, you know, we see uh, road rage. We see people just murdering each other and taking out guns and shooting each other for no reason. We see gangs and mobs of people going into stores and just looting the stores and tear taking everything out of these stores in the malls or, or, or parking lots, stores, or si whatever type of stores there are. There is a disregard of the fear of God and a disregard for society right now and all authority that God has put against the lawbreakers. So right now what's happening is that people are disregarding any authority and they don't care. That's why you got mobs of people, the Chileans and different people breaking into these high end homes, very, very gifted robbers and thieves breaking in that are the borders are open from other countries and there's an increased lawlessness and they're going into the rich people's homes mm -hmm, because they don't have what they have they got their coveters and their their crooks and they're 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 they don't want to get it the right way they just want to go and steal from the rich so they're going 
you know, in mobs of three and four, all dressed in black, breaking into people's homes and stealing what they have worked with their hard earned money for. Mm -hmm. Then you got an influx of lawlessness, just so much lawlessness where you can grab your phone right now and you not only murdering your families, but you have an incredible sexual perversion right at your fingertips. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. What is that? Lawlessness is, Jesus said, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold, but those that endure to the end will be saved. What does that mean? Lawlessness is not keeping the commandments of God. When people practice lawlessness, they're not loving at all, okay? When people aren't loving one another, even in the church, okay, this is this does not negate the church. So even in the church, when people aren't loving one another, it's almost like one person gets offended with another person and hates a person because that person hurt them in some way. Offended. So their heart gets cold. You, you following me? They don't forgive. Even though they say they forgive, you could see it by their conduct. They don't forgive and they don't have them any mercy on the person that hurt them. You following me? They have no mercy on a person that hurts them. They seek out vengeance. They start gossiping. They start slandering. They start, you know, uh, putting them down. Oh, they're not a Christian because they got hurt. Listen, people, listen, people, we're going to hurt each other. I don't care who you are. You could be a tongue talking, spirit filled, you know, jumping up and down, worshiping Christian. Nobody is perfect except Jesus. And we're going to hurt each other. Jesus is the only perfect one. We're going to offend somebody, even, whether it's knowingly or unknowingly, hopefully unknowingly. Okay? We're going to hurt each other. But the problem is, the person that got hurt won't forgive the other person to show no mercy at all. They'll just cut you off. They'll block you. They'll put you down. They'll do whatever it takes because they're offended. Mm -hmm. In the church, people that were once loving people can become unloving people because they're the victims of lawlessness and they see too much lawlessness. So when you're a victim of injury, when you're a victim of lawlessness, when you're a victim of crime, when you're a victim of hurt, when you're a victim of abuse, your heart can become cold as ice. I was going to bring my guitar, but it's in, the, it's in my music room. Listen, when I practice guitar, and I am growing my nails long, so I'm not going to play it much because I miss my long nails, y'all. I can play my piano, and God is fine with that. So my guitar, I had to work for months on my fingertips, okay? My fingertips hurt so bad for three to four months, I almost put it down. It was so much pain to develop the calluses on my fingertips, but this is what happens when you keep getting injured over and over and over again. You develop calluses on your heart, just like I did on my fingers. I developed all these calluses and these calluses, because I was getting hurt continually on my fingers, I started developing calluses that made my fingers so hard that when I pushed on the strings, it didn't hurt me anymore. It was hard like a rock, man. It was like, whew, doesn't hurt at all. Well, this is what happens when we get injured by people we love that should love us back, or we get hurt by, you know, the world and the crimes committed to us, whether it's at work, whether it's in the church, whether it's among our family, whether it's in your marriage or horrible marriage, whether it's your friendships or frenemies, People you thought were your friends, but they're not your friends. So what happens is people who are once loving. Jesus is saying that because lawlessness 
will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So he's talking to people about the love, the agape love. When we once were able to love people, we now harbor bitterness and anger in our hearts. Even though we say we forgive, we don't really forgive because there's nothing that other person can do except to our standards for us to forgive them. We can't just forgive. We, we can't just overlook a fault. We can't just put up with one another. Okay. So this is the sign of Jesus coming. Because they said that disciples said, what is the sign of your coming in the end of the age? He said, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. And then he goes on and on and on. And then he says, because, because the increase of lawlessness. So people are killing each other right now. People are so wrapped up in politics right now that they don't even have time for God. Mm -hmm. People are so concerned about which party that you serve that they hate you instantly, even in the church. If you're a Democrat or Republican, they'll just hate you, one or the other. It's lawlessness, okay? Look at the decline of people turning away from God and not going to church and just staying away from God altogether. Okay, for 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 says, Know this also that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. I'm talking about young people, young kids, okay? I'm not talking about grown adults. Young kids in, under the authority of their parents. Unthankful, unholy, traitors, heady, high-minded, high indeed lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God without natural affection, having a form of godliness, but denying the power that could change them from such turn away. What are you supposed to do with these people? What are you supposed to do with these people? Followers of Jesus are letting their love fade for God. They're growing cold in their walk with God. Do you see that around you? They're partaking of the things of the world. They're going to the bars. They're going to the nightclubs. They're sleeping with each other. They're having sex outside of marriage. They're looking at porn. I mean, which sin is it? They're getting drunk. They're getting high. Which sin is it going to be? Which sin? I mean, you choose the sins that God lists. You choose because God warns us that those that practice such things will not go to heaven. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. There's no if, ands, or buts of it. There, this is real stuff. Because an equity or lawlessness will abound. What is an equity? What is it? An equity is unrepented sin. It is sin. How many people think that it's okay to support the gays? It's, it's okay to support abortion. What has happened to people that they become reprobate concerning the faith? Because the love of God in them grows cold. The agape love, the love of God in them becomes desensitized. I never say that word right, so I'm sorry. But it becomes desensitized. Is that right? Am I saying that right? It, you can't feel it anymore. You don't feel the pain that you cause other people. Because you harbor anger and bitterness in your heart towards somebody in your family, somebody in your friendship, somebody that your ex is, that you are married to, that you dated, your children, your parents, your siblings. I don't care what it is. The list goes on. It's many of us hold bitterness in our hearts towards God because we feel like God has disappointed us so much. That why wasn't he there when I was getting abused sexually? Why wasn't he there when my husband was beating me? Why wasn't he there when my wife cheated on me? Why didn't he care about me when I'm, you know, living and married for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years? And then he let this stuff happen to me where my spouse doesn't love me. Or my spouse, you know, ruined my children. 
So, you know, we have this real stuff going on in our hearts. Or why didn't God save my child? Why did he let my child get, you know, destroyed in a motorcycle accident or killed in a car wreck? or in a plane crash or some horrendous death that happened that God could have stopped, but he didn't stop it. Why did he not save my parents? Why didn't, did he not take my, my child who was on drugs and alcohol and they committed suicide or my mother or dad that committed suicide or something? Why didn't God stop it? I was praying for them. Why did God hear me? Why does God not bring justice into this situation of somebody that came and murdered my, my parent or grandparents or my child? Where is God? Why is God allowing evil to happen to his people that love him? Or maybe you don't love him. Maybe you just say, God, why are you allowing such evil in my life. If you really exist, why would you allow evil? I don't even know why God's leading me here right now, but I'm going. It's the Holy Spirit. Lord, why did you, why at this point in my life, and I have no children that love me. Why, why did you allow this? Lord, why did you allow that I'm at a point in my life I've lost everybody in my family when I'm serving you and they all turned on me and now I'm alone. Why did you, why are you punishing me, Lord? I thought we were blessed people. I thought we were increased. I thought our peace would be amazing. I thought all this stuff and I'm feeling all this pain. And because of the pain that you feel that the enemy allows because Listen, there is a real devil and he doesn't want you to know that he exists. So what he does is he is a prince of this world. This is not our home. Okay. Satan is the prince of this world. He is the prince of the power of the air. God says the prince of this world is Satan. This is not our home. We are not of this world. We are of the kingdom of God. So what happens is Satan himself, he hates God and he lies about God and his character. So he said, if God really loved you, and then you just, the committee in your brain is going to start talking to each other and say, discusses that if God really loves you, he would not allow this to happen. You know, your child would be normal. Your child would be serving God. If God really loved you, your child would be healthy or your parents would love you. And, you know, that person wouldn't have raped you or abused you. So Satan and his committee will start talking in your mind and your heart starts getting cold just because of lawlessness. You think that God is lawless. See, God is just, talk he's talking to me right now. <laughs> he's just, he's talking to me right now. He's talking to me right now. You're think, you think because lawlessness will abound or iniquity will be multiplied, the love of many will grow cold. So your heart is getting cold towards God. The love of God is getting cold because you think that it's God doing this. You think that God could stop it. You think that God is the one that didn't care for you, that doesn't love you to allow for you to suffer. But you don't understand the sovereignty of God, beloved. You don't understand that we are in Satan's world. This world is not our home. And he controls what's happening in this world. Even though God controls him, God allows things to happen. I mean, listen, the disciples were tragically murdered and martyred. Okay, I think except John and the Isle of Patmos. But they were crucified upside down. There are his disciples that got burned alive in oil. And you think we're not going to get hurt if we serve God. That's the thing. You think that once you get saved, now you become a Christian. You got the agape love of God in your heart. And everything's going to go perfect and smooth. And life is going to be great. No, <laughs> that's not how it works. 
that is when the devil comes after you because you rejected him now. You were once his, God pulled you out, you rejected the devil by your free will, and God pulled you out of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son Jesus, according to the book of Colossians. Now you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, you are his, you got the seal of God on you, and now bad stuff starts happening, and iniquity starts happening, and stuff, lawlessness starts happening around you as a Christian. So now you're saying, doesn't God love me? And Satan is just whispering in your ear with his demonic committee, doesn't God love me? He lo and you keep rehearsing it over and over again, all your pain, all your hurt, all the tragedies, all the things that you've been going through in your life. And you, you start rehearsing it and you start looking at your whole life one by one and everything that's happened. And you're like, why didn't God stop this? Why did he allow this? He doesn't even care about me. So because an equity will abound and you see it all around you that God is allowing people to attack you. Weapons are going to form, but they're not going to prosper. Isaiah 54, 17, they're going to form. Did God, did God not tell you the weapons are going to be formed against you, but they're not going to prosper. Okay. Joseph, a man of integrity that did not sleep with Potiphar's wife, was falsely accused and thrown in jail. I think it was 11 years he was there. I'm guessing. I don't know. I, I read it somewhere. I think it was 11 years. He was in jail, falsely accused. He could have cursed God. Job could have cursed God. Like his wife said, curse God and die. Job could have cursed God. But he didn't. Joseph didn't either. So when you're going through this iniquity in your life and people are getting at you and they're attacking you and bad things are happening to you and crazy stuff is happening to you and weapons are being formed, just remember. Y'all, just remember, okay? I could tell you stories and stories about my life, how Satan tried to take me out. From the time I got saved. Satan has tried to take and destroy my life in ways that would blow your mind. It's so crazy and so demonic that it would blow your mind and make your head spin. Because of the call of God in my life. He hates me and he hates you. If you're doing anything for God, he hates you. If you're doing nothing for God, he doesn't care about you. If you're just religious, he doesn't care about you. But when you're preaching that word and you are warning people and you are trying to alert people about the end times, Satan hates you because you are his chosen vessel. You are highly favored in the sight of God and highly favored people are going to have fiery trials coming at them. But if you allow an equity and, and, and offense to get you, you're, you're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. Satan's going to attack lots of different areas in your life continually. You're going to always be putting out fires. You know, you got this problem going on, then that problem going on, and then that problem going on, and that problem. Because it's not normal to have continual problems in your life. There are openings, demonic openings, out of your own disobedience because your heart is not right with God, okay? Because even when you're going through the trials, again, through the same scripture, Matthew 24, 12, because an equity will abound, the love of many will grow cold, but those that endure to the end shall, shall be saved. You got to keep your love walk very sweet. When somebody offends you, Let's say, let's say, let's just say, for instance, you have a best friend, maybe lifelong, maybe short lived. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Let's say you have a best friend and that friend upsets you. And instead of you talking about it, you're talking to everybody else about it instead of talking to them about it. So what happens is 
because you don't obey God, as the scripture says, that if somebody offends you, you go to them, you go to them. And because you won't listen to God and obey his word, when he says that, when, so, when your brother or sister offends you, you go directly to them. You don't go to your friends. You don't go on social media. First, you don't do nothing. You go to them. And you talk to them. But because you don't obey God, Satan gets in there because you let the door open by disobedience to God's word. Mm -hmm. I have to, I've had this happen to me thousands of times. I tell people, if you got a problem with me, if I did something to you, you come to me. If you're a mature or mature Christian, you got a problem, come to me directly. With me, come to me directly. I'm not talking about strangers or if you disagree with what I say. I'm talking about real relationships, okay? Come to me. The Bible says come. Go to that person. So what happens when you disobey God, Satan gets in there. Now you're going to have problems, okay? You're going to have all kinds of attacks in your life. And you still think you're right with God. And then when you get attacked, you blame it that the devil's attacking you. Well, he's attacking you because of you. He ain't attacking you because you're so righteous. He's attacking you because you're unrighteous before God. You will not listen to what he says. But see how twisted things get. Then your heart gets cold. Then you're like, oh my gosh, you know, devil keeps attacking me. I keep having one problem after another. Y'all, the problems are coming because of you. Not because of them, not because you're so righteous and holy and a preacher. It's because you have unrepentant iniquity in your heart. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will grow cold. It's not just other people causing sin against you and in our world. It's also you having unrepented sin towards God in your heart. That's making your heart like a callus, like my fingers. When I learned to play guitar, my fingers got so callous. It was so painful. But when you keep injuring them and injuring them and injuring them through lots of iniquity in your own life and, and outside people coming at you, when you don't forgive and you don't obey God and do what his word tells you to do, you will get punished for it spiritually you're gonna get lashes if you're a child of God God is going to come in and he's going to cause things to happen and discipline you pow kapow spank you <laughs> he's going to spank you hard if you're his child and you're not a bastard if you're his child the bible says you're not a bastard the bible says those words he will kapow you until you get right with him if he if you love him if he loves you and you're just like not obeying him you're gonna get hit and then you're gonna blame it the devil's attacking me no you are allowing the devil to come in through your own disobedience and iniquity lawlessness unrepented sin breaking the commandments of god you're not doing it his way right just like in the family. I mean, we are seeing in our families how people don't even have natural affection for one another. Are you guys following me? I mean, we are seeing that they are cold, uninviting. They don't care for your life, your death, what's happening. They're all about themselves and their agenda. They want you to care about them. It's all around me, myself, and I. And so what happens is when you have unforgiveness in your heart and you keep harboring this unforgiveness, it turns into a root of bitterness. And that root of bitterness defiles many and your love is going to get cold towards others and God. Your heart's going to become hardened and callous like with a hot branding iron. The Bible says your consciences are seared as with a hot branding iron. So when your conscience is seared, you can't feel anything. You don't cry when you should be crying. You don't weep when you should be weeping. You don't feel um, pain when you should be feeling pain. You're so seared. Things don't affect you 
you have a very difficult time crying at all. Because you have hardened yourself so much and put the walls up so much to protect yourself, you can't even feel the love of God. So the love of many will grow cold because iniquity, lawlessness in your own life, from the outside in, from the inside out, you're just, it's like a vicious circle. So God wants to come into your heart. He wants to come into your life. He's warning us about this, all of us. In the last days, this is going to happen for all of us. I'm not excluded. I get offended like I'll get out. You guys know that. I get offended. I mean, listen, people want to offend me and attack me like you've never seen. I don't, I don't miss a step. Because I know the manner of spirit people are. So what do I do? What do you got to do? You don't put yourself in harm's way, number one. I'm going to go down the list and I'll be done. Number one, I don't even have a list. I just, God never tells me what to speak on until like 60 seconds or two minutes before I come on air. Number one, what do you do to keep your heart from becoming calloused? Okay, this is serious stuff. Number one is forgiveness. That is the root of all problems, is unforgiveness. <laughs> that is the root, besides pride, of all sin. But unforgiveness, unforgiveness brings the devil right in, and you have lost all your peace, all of your joy. People look at you, you have no joy in your countenance. You have none of the glory of God, no glow of the Holy Spirit. You don't have any peace in your eyes. You don't have nothing but sulky sourpuss faces like you just ate some sour patches whatever they do <laughs> sorry i don't know how to do all that that's what happens you look <laughs> hey amanda i love you too you are you have a sourpuss look on your face okay who wants to be a christian when you look like you have no joy. I'm not talking about laughter. The Bible says even in laughter, the heart is sour, sorry, like heavy. So laughing doesn't mean you have joy. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will give you that joy. But you can't forgive until you receive the forgiveness from the Lord for your own sins. Otherwise, you don't know what forgiveness is. Once you go to the foot of the cross and you see how much you have offended the Lord and you receive his forgiveness for yourself, then you can give others forgiveness with the same forgiveness that God has forgiven you with. The love of God, the forgiveness of God. Otherwise, you don't know what forgiveness means. The world doesn't know what forgiveness is. They just conjure it up. How in the world can you forgive anybody when you don't even know what that means? Number one. Number two, you have to, you, okay, <laughs> this is hard for some of you guys, okay? But this is really important. You have to assess the situation by stepping outside of it and with your emotions not involved in it. I know this is hard. Number one, forgive. Number two, assess the situation with the eyes of the Lord, not your natural feelings, not your natural eyes, not your natural understanding, which is foolishness to God. The wisdom of this world, the Bible says, is foolishness to God. So you have to assess this situation that has uh, come up against you and, and that has afflicted you and that this lawless deed that was done towards you, you have to assess it from the outside. If it was a somebody that you really love that hurt you, many times it's because they've been hurt. That's why it's easy to forgive when you can see this. People can only, they can't give you what they don't have. They can only forgive you what they do have. And if they have never experienced the healing power of God in their heart and in their lives, they're not going to be able to, uh, to love you in the way that you want or need. 
all they're going to be able to give you is their pain. Their mouth is going to speak what's in their heart. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. This is why they're fornicating. This is why they're they're uh, committing adultery. This is why there's murders and thefts. Lawlessness comes from the heart. But because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But those that endure to the end shall be saved. So you got to forgive. you got to assess the situation. Is your family treating you this way? Because that they're under the guise of Satan. They're under his command. They're under his authority. They're under his pain and his deception. If you understand that, you're able to forgive easier. You're able to understand, wait a minute. They don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They know what they're choosing to do towards you, but they don't know that Satan is behind them and they're deceived by the prince of this world. Okay? That's what it means. It doesn't mean that God's not going to hold them responsible for their thefts and murders and fornications and drunkenness and lies and gossip. It just means they don't know that Satan controls them, that that's their father. So you got to have the same heart. Lord, for, I forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know the evil one has them captive. They don't know that they're deceived by Satan. Okay. Number three. So number one was you got to forgive them. Number two is you got to assess the situation from the outside in with spiritual eyes, not with the natural eyes. You got to step aside. Don't react. Don't react to them. But you got to assess the situation. Okay. The next one you got, if they're believers, only if they're believers, you got to go to them. Okay. I have come to learn that unbelievers. They are easily offended, just like many believers. There are people you cannot go to. Because if you go to them, you're going to get whooped. You're going to get back. You're going to get whooped bad. Because the Bible says don't reprove a fool unless you want to get like a 100 beatings to your back. Like if you reprove or you go to somebody that's foolish and a fool and doesn't care about the things of God, you're going to get whooped. Mm-hmm. Because they don't care about Jesus. You understand? So you got to set the next one. If you can't go to them, number four, you set boundaries. What are boundaries? Mm, let's talk about boundaries. You guys know I do spiritual counseling. So boundaries are a fence. It is a guard line that you under, you got, you got standards that you don't let just anybody into your presence, just like God. God doesn't let drunkards into his presence without repenting. Repentance means don't, re, turn away from your sin and don't do it again. God doesn't let adulterers into his presence. God doesn't allow fornicators into his presence. God doesn't allow the profane into his presence or liars or gossips or slanderers. He does not allow certain or homosexuals or anybody into his presence. You got to repent. And you got to be washed in the blood of Jesus of these sins, never to do them again. You got to go to him. Oh, and porn too. Unless you repent as a believer, if you fall, you got to repent. Then you go into his presence. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. If you're not been washed in the blood of Jesus, you can't enter his presence. Well, what is your boundaries going to be? Are you going to keep letting people into your presence that commit iniquity around you? Because iniquity or lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. The more you let somebody in your presence that keeps getting drunk, your heart's going to get cold. The more you let somebody in your presence and stay in a relationship with somebody that's fornicating and cheating on you, your heart's going to get cold. The more you let somebody into your presence that's yelling and cusses at you in a marriage or a relationship or friendships or family ships or spouse ships, the more you let them into your presence, it is ungodly. God, God don't even do it. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Your heart's going to get cold because now you're putting up with evil and iniquity. Now you're enabling it. 
Now you're saying, it's okay. God loves you. Keep cussing me out. Keep getting drunk and putting me down. Oh, God loves you. Keep cheating on me. Keep looking at porn. It's okay. I love you. God's going to help you. That's just stupid, y'all. That's just stupid, okay? Because listen, I was, I was taught in church that I was okay until God showed me his character. That's why y'all getting angry at God because you think he wants you to put up with evil. Ah! That's why you keep getting angry at him. Satan says, oh, look, God didn't do nothing. God wants you to do something. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Cut it off. Cut off, off. Cut off sin that other people are bringing into your life and that you're allowing in your life. Then That iniquity. It's going to harden your heart. Listen, the more, the longer you stay married to somebody that's evil, the harder your heart's going to get because you keep allowing it to happen without consequences the evil that they're bringing in. The longer you let your parents put you down your whole life and you can't say nothing or else they're never going to talk to you, the harder your heart's going to get because you think God wants you to do that. God ain't crazy. You, God ain't crazy. But the devil and the church, the false church, the false teachings. I don't even think most churches purposely do this. I just think that they interpret the word wrong. They don't know the character of God, that he's a mighty fortress and our stronghold in time of trouble and that he hates sin. Not only in us, but we're, but in others too around us. We ain't supposed to be yoking up with evil doers, even in marriage, even in our family. We listen, if you got a family member, that gets drunk and cusses and swears or, or does drugs, you're going to sit there in their apartment or their home and go over there and just hang out with them and like, and just let them cuss and drink and do all their Christmas stuff like they do. Are, are you going to go over their house? God ain't. He won't even let them in his house, but you're, you think it's Christian for you to go to their house. Because you give, you give, um, what is that word I'm looking for, Lord? You give a, a stamp of approval. You give him a stamp of approval. Because you support iniquity. You see, the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. That includes your spouse, your family, and everybody else. You are not in a prison. Jesus came to set the captives free and to open the prison doors. And y'all are in prisons that you're creating in your own life. Am I helping y'all? Y'all are in prisons. And the church puts you in prison. When Jesus said, I came to open the prison doors and to set the captives free. But yet you think you got to sit in a prison during Christmas or your marriage or friendships or family ships that are wicked and that's a godly thing to do? No, it's foolishness. The Bible nowhere says that. The Bible says, do not have fellowship with unbelievers. What does light have in common with darkness? What does Christ have in common with Satan or Belial? What does righteousness have in common with unrighteousness then he goes on to say come out from among them and separate yourselves touch not the unclean thing then there's ifs and thens all through the bible there ain't no like we're hanging around all these sinners no they're going to destroy you they're going to make your heart get hard towards god you are putting a stamp of approval on their behavior because there is no consequences you are an enabler. You are becoming sick. You have become sick. You understand? Because you thought that God said you got to allow this stuff to happen in your life. You got to love him with the love of God. The love of God and the grace of God, the Bible says in Titus, it keeps us from sinning and from sin. Now, it doesn't encourage us to continue in sin, 
but it puts the fear of God in us to stop sinning and to live holy lives before this wicked world. So when you keep accepting, when you keep accepting evil around you, in your family, in your marriage, in your children, in your spouse, in your siblings, I don't care what it is. All you're doing is hurting your spiritual walk. You're hardening your heart. Because like I said, you get callous to evil. Just like when I was practicing guitar, you know, getting my fingers ready. My fingers were getting callous because it kept feeling that pain over and over again. And that's what happens to your heart towards God. Your agape, the love of God grows cold. It says, because of the increase of lawlessness, a great number, your heart becomes cold. So you got to just forgive. You got to assess the situation. You got to step out from it. You got to put boundaries up. And then you got to love them from a distance. You pray for them. The Bible says pray for your enemies. Pray for them. They don't know what they're doing. They need prayer. They need to be saved. They're on their way to hell. They need our prayers. And Satan wants you to get so offended. Mm-hmm. Offense will keep you from praying for people and their salvation. Offense, Satan wants you to get so mad at your family and the people that you love that he'll keep you from praying. It's like, forget that. I ain't praying for them if they're doing that to me. That's offense too. That's a bitterness of heart that you can't pray for people. So, And then the other one was going to them, going to them directly if they're a brother and sister in Christ. And don't think you're being so high-minded that no, listen, I don't care who it is. Everybody's going to hurt you except Jesus. Everybody, every human being on this earth, including your perfect spouse, which there is none, is going to hurt you. They're going to hurt you. Your children are going to hurt you. Somebody's going to hurt you. Everybody's going to hurt you. Your children are, your parents are, your grandparents your best friend is going to hurt you. But the mature in Christ know that, again, you've got to obey God. If you're not obeying God, God's going to send the tormentors. And you're going to, your peace is going to be gone. Your joy is going to be gone. There's, your, your life in, in the spirit is going to be dead. It's going to be lukewarm. You're just going to be a churchgoer, religious person praying. But you ain't going to feel the presence of God. You, you know, and you're going to have trouble one after another in your life. There's going to be problems. You're going to have constant problems, okay? Because you let the devil in because of your own disobedience. Satan just can't come in and attack you for no reason. It's your own disobedience. You give him legal entryway, okay? That's why your joy is gone. That's why you don't have any glow. That's why you don't live pure. You know, you got no safe friends. You don't even have real friends. You don't have any Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled Christian fellowship with you daily. You don't have any accountability in your life daily. Your heart's get, gotten cold because of iniquity. So I hope this helped you guys. I'm done now. I got to get going. If you need counseling, please, I do spiritual counseling. Okay, I do not do clinical counseling. I don't believe in clinical counseling. Mm-mm. I believe you got to walk in the spirit. You got to you got to walk in the spirit. You got to know what's going on. Okay? By the spirit of God, not by your flesh. That's how I counsel people. You got to operate in the gifts. You got to know by the spirit what's happening in someone's life. That's how I counsel. That's why I'm busy every day. I got multiple sessions tonight. I I'm People need the Lord. They don't need another drug. They don't need another, you know, secular humanism or philosophy. They need Jesus. We need Jesus. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's freedom. And boy, that freedom is amazing. When we obey God and we repent, we get washed in the blood of the lamb. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from every sin. And that's why I want to encourage you today, Victoria, Betty, Melanie, all you guys are on here. Um, and I want to encourage you to keep seeking God. You do what's right, no matter what they do. Don't worry about them. 
You do what's right before God and God will bless you. He will reward you. You will feel his spirit. You will feel his presence. You'll feel his anointing on your life. You will have the victory. You got to stay away from evil people. You got to keep him at an arm's length. Stop feeling guilty over it, especially with the holidays here. You are not obligated to anyone but Jesus. And he is the, the Lamb of God. And wherever the Lamb says to go, we will follow him. Our family are the children of God, the true children of God. He is separating the wheat and the tare. He is showing us who are his. Those that serve the Lamb, those that show the fruit of the Spirit. Those that are kind, show kindness and gentleness and self-control. They don't live in sin. So you keep following Jesus no matter what other people are doing or saying. You have the love lock. You forgive. You set boundaries. You go to them if they offended you. You obey God. It, listen, if you don't want them in your life, you don't need to go to them. Even if they're a brother or sister in Christ, if you don't, like them like if you don't like them and they drive you crazy and they're a mess even if they're new believers or whatever they're you don't have to have them in your life hey rick buenos dias feliz navidad okay back to the <laughs> back to <laughs> back to my message listen you have to assess the situation some people you don't want back that are not healthy for you you don't have to get along with everybody in the church. Shocker. You don't have to have a relationship with everybody in the church. The Bible does not say that. Jesus had his inner circle and that was it. Twelve. That was it. And one of them was a betrayer. Until the new one was appointed. The new apostle. But you don't have to get along with everybody. So quit quit having this false belief system that's not in the bible okay everybody forsook paul the apostle that wrote a third of the new testament he didn't have anybody because of what he did for christ they don't want to be around him they knew he his he was his head was on you know like he was like there it was a bounty hunt after him they don't whatever it is paul said no bad things about them even Stephen, when he was stoned, he said, Lord, don't lay their sins against me to their charge. That's why I pray every night, you know, for family members. Lord, don't lay their sins against me to their charge. Don't punish them because of what they've done to me. They don't know. They can't see. They're blind. So I just want to encourage you, keep your heart soft and tender. Keep your boundaries. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Don't hold on to this false belief systems that the church has taught you that keeps you in prison and in bondage to Satan, even in your marriages. You are not to enable evil or evil people or evil behavior. You are not to be married to that. Why are you letting it in your house when God won't even let it in his house? God bless you. I love you. My link for counseling will be, um, I think my email will be posted on this. If you are new on YouTube and my channel has grown leaps and bounds, just be a subscriber on my channel and please click the like button. It really helps me with the algorithms and I love you all and I'll see you in a week unless Jesus comes. I will see you in the clouds. I hope this encouraged you. Please let me know. God bless you. Mwah! Okay.